All right, so clearly this isn't the best framing for a video. I'm also wearing my AirPods, so the audio is going to be great. But when I, you know, I think about this channel as a mostly a stream of consciousness about what's going on in my life, uh, and hopefully people can learn and take away from that. But also because I have a really bad memory, and it's really helpful to look back at this kind of stuff because I don't remember. Uh, so for the past two months, I have been talking to Strix, which is a men's concealer tool company. I've known the founder for about two years. They launched in January. And when he described it to me in January, I was like, this, this is the perfect product to the right. Like I was so into it and I use it. And then two months ago, he reached out and was like, Hey, you know, we're looking for somebody who were like digital marketing and video. And like, we basically need you, but do you know anybody? And, uh, I had like a couple of guys in mind, but I was like, look, I am kind of thinking about doing it myself. And he was like, that's very exciting. And so for the past two months, I have had several calls and I've been in New York and I've, you know, we've had a lot of discussions around what it would look like for me to join and the role. Uh, I met there in an incubator. So I met with all the invest, like, uh, you know, the incubator guys to talk through uh, joining that because, you know, you had a, you had a, Fire slow and fire fast in the startup, which I experienced directly working my last one. And it's definitely a role that would be bigger and more ambitious than anything I've ever done. But I always have faith in myself uh, to do that sort of thing. And uh, on Sunday of this week, today, it's Friday, I'm headed back uh, from Philly because I was in New York for three days, Philly Friday, and now I'm on my way back now. And so you know, four days ago, I got the contract and like my start date is in uh, two weeks or I guess a week and a half now. It's, it's the end of this week. And uh, basically, it's it outlines everything we've talked about. And I just haven't signed it yet because now my wife is getting a little bit of cold feet because part of taking this job is once they raise money in a series A, then um, I would relocate to New York, which is like. If you would have told me five years ago that I might move to New York, I would have said absolutely not. I never wanted to move to New York or ever live in New York. Then I started traveling to New York a lot, and I was like, I can see the appeal. And I just didn't want to do New York in like a just get out of college, move to New York kind of way. Like I want to be able to live in a nicer place and be established and not be scraping by. And like now I have that opportunity to do that. And I think think it is valuable for me to be in the wider ecosystem of the companies and brands and that whole world. I think like I can only go so far in Pittsburgh on my own in my studio, in my backyard and like really try and like, and traveling to other places. I've been to New York now several times this year, like as part of, you know, meeting with companies and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and so I would join as a as full time chief marketing officer and co founder, and then like basically on, off and running. And then I had dinner on Wednesday night with a, a brand that I've been a fan of for a long time. I emailed the CEO and said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to be in in town. I like, want to get dinner." And uh, I told him I might join Strix and meet, move to New York and everything. And he emailed me that night and said, "Like, hey, uh, you know." I was, I didn't want to bring it up at dinner, but, you know, we're looking for somebody like you and a chief marketing officer. Uh, I would, you know, I know you've talked to Strix, but, you know, I would hate to not ask you. And I just had a, uh, I just talked to him for like 30 minutes on the phone and he said all of the right things about, uh, you know, he, he definitely didn't, he didn't say anything bad about Strix or try to downplay that opportunity, but he really, you know, comp complimented me and like the things that I could do, but laid out this kind of vision for what I would do in the role of chief marketing officer and like the company growth. And it's, it's a very different risk profile between the two because Strix is a seed fund, a seed funded incubator cosmetics company in a market that I'm still trying to figure out if it, ha if it has legs and can go you know, is our guys going to buy cosmetics products versus a bag company that is basically like to me, but a D to C version of that. And, and a company that I've always liked. And, um, and like the, like the closest analogy I can say is like, I'm on the altar with Strix. 
I got everything done. I'm like standing at the altar and I do not like, I know those guys now. I am excited about the opportunity. I think I can make a huge difference. And I'm like really excited about the idea of working in the trenches again with somebody. Cause I've been on my own, you know, I've got team members and everything, but I'm on my own, um, uh, in the studio and, But, you know, the, the bag company is, uh, it's a proven category. They have a great product. I think they're positioned well. They have some really cool stuff in the pipeline that they're working on, moving on. But, like, so I'm at the altar with this guy. And then, like, if I don't go through with with the other company, it's kind of like, it's almost like I slept with somebody else, but we were never going to talk about it because, like, I would want to work with him in the future, not just for my channel, but, like, even in the capacity of working in Strix and, like, I think there's that that would be I think it's there's a nice fit of what we can do on that one. And so I, I guess I just hate I love the fact that these companies are not the first opportunities that I've had as part of going out on my own in the channel to join a brand and like have this like larger role presented to me. Like I think Strix is the fourth one that this has happened with, but Strix is the first one that I've been like, yes, this is something that I believe in and I can do. And now I have two really interesting opportunities and to say no to one, it's like, it's the same reason that I can't get rid of some of my clothes and my closet that I don't wear. It's like this digital hoarding tendency over here on the, uh, on like the clothing side. It's like, I got these two opportunities. I clearly have to say no to one of them. Um, uh, and you know, I, I just talked to some, I just talked to one of my friends now and it's like, you know, either of these companies, if they don't work out, they're going to fire me just as fast uh, because I can't drag down their company no matter how much they like me. So to take emotion out of the decision-making and look objectively to say like, which one is the more um, important or the more meaningful opportunity. And so, you know, I'm flattered. It's nice. I, I, it, and, and, and but on, on top of that too, it's like I could just continue to do the Cavalier full time and kind of live that lifestyle, not move to New York, spend you know time with my family, travel every once in a while. Um, but like being on a team again and building something, like being in the trenches building something, is so exciting. And I think that's what uh, you know. That's definitely the underlying reason that I want to do any of these things. And so. I definitely don't want to drive back and forth on the turnpike that much uh, anymore. And so moving to New York and then driving home to Pittsburgh for like holidays sounds just fine to me. Uh, or taking the train. It's tough when you get to, you know, we couldn't take the train home to Pittsburgh and then uh, get around very well, but we'll see. A big thing of this is like my, my wife has always wanted to live outside of Pittsburgh to some degree and I wanted to, we almost moved to London in 2016 and that, and that stuff fell through. Uh, but now that I have like a piece of paper that says like, you know, relocation will happen. I think it's become very real and she's a little hesitant. So we're going to do like a trip to New York and, and, you know, let her get a feel of the place and, and that sort of thing. And so, uh, so I have a, what, three more hours in the drive to consider my options and think about it a little bit more, talk to some advisors, get some feedback on things, but I uh, feel very fortunate that anybody wants me to work for them because there was a point early in my career, which most people go through, where like I was interviewing for jobs and getting rejected and turned down, and that feels awful. It feels absolutely terrible. And I can remember getting rejected by one. I was I was going to work at Heinz and the way that the job was positioned, I was like perfectly uh, qualified for it. And the company was changing and exciting. And I remember getting rejected for that one by the, by the recruiter that I was working with, or, you know, they let me know that I didn't get the job and just laying on my bedroom floor, just like, this is, this is it. I was like, how can I, you know, how can I do, how can I work professionally? Like I can't get a most basic entry level job. And in hindsight, that position, I had a friend who did that, basically that position, 
And he got fired a year later because the company did a major layoffs. Like no matter what I would have done, if I would have went into that job, I would have attached to it and gotten my rhythm. And then I probably would have got fired not too much longer uh, from, from starting it. And so, you know, I did a lot of bad, I did a lot of like awful jobs in between to, and like finding my footing. But now I've like found my footing, I think, you know, I still don't want to be, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up other than a great dad. Uh, but, you know, kind of finding this niche of like menswear and the D to C space and, the, you know, the space itself is booming. So it's right place, right time uh, is very cool. And so that is my stream of consciousness right now. Looking back on this will be interesting because I will have made the decision and I, I don't know. I have a really good gut instinct. So I might just follow my gut instinct, but thank you for watching my rambling as always, whoever's watching this in the future. Uh, I'm going to return to my safe driving. I'm just going to stop for gas. Uh, today was lovely. We, we went to the oldest men's like men's club in the country uh, in Philadelphia. Justin Jeffers invited us there and it was me and Christian from Theon Harris and Brock and Baron and uh, Effortless Jen and like uh, just a really cool group of guys. And that's another one that I'm so thankful for because when I was in high school, I essentially got bullied out of um, my elementary school and I had to switch to a public school. And when I went to the public school, like I jumped around in friend groups. I never really found my friend group in middle school. And, and the one that I found, like carried on to high school. And, but even in high school, like I had my core group of friends I you know, small group, but I never really like had, I don't know. And then I got to Apple and I definitely found like my tribe. Like I found other nerdy people who were intelligent and excited and they wanted to go and do things. And then it was tough to leave that. And then I went to First Insight and First Insight, the startup was amazing because it was the same thing. It was young people. They were excited and, and like sharp and, and all this sort of stuff. And the problem with first insight is people kept leaving. And luckily I've stayed in touch with most of those. So I have this like, I have this group of people at Apple that I met. I have this group of people at first insight. And the hardest part about going out on my own, the Cavalier is like, I don't have coworkers anymore, but the menswear like community that does content creation around YouTube and Instagram, uh, it is like friendly, but I've found like this core group of guys. And it's like the same thing as first insight and Apple. It's like they're, uh, they're welcoming and they're sharp. And, and like, I've become such good friends with these guys. And when I felt, you know, in elementary school, and middle school, I had like one, one best friend, one good friend that carried me through many years. And the fact that I now have like a group of, of these guys that I can call that is, is very special too. And so uh, part of this video is just me recognizing and my family life is like family life right now is so good. My, my newborn daughter is sleeping through the night and, and like my wife is an amazing mother and she can handle all three of them by herself at home. And it's just like, everything's very good right now. And, uh, I want to, I want to be able to look back and say like, you know, I appreciated this time because I really do. I mean, even though, you know, I end up, I've driven, you know, I've driven 15 hours this week uh, and stayed at a hostel where I shared a shower with other guys uh, in, a, in a tiny bed. Uh, this is like, this is, this is a high point in my life and I'm excited that I'm glad I can have the retrospect. Uh, I'm glad that I can look back now and say like, you know, I've done a lot of work to this point. Everything's been good and I've hustled and like now on this three hour drive, I can get a little bit sentimental about it and share a little bit of that with you. I'm coming up on 15 minutes. Uh, wow. Jonathan Wander, I always have you in my mind with the timing on these things. So thanks, gents. I am excited to see what decision that I make. So next time, gents, we'll see what happens.